This is the Padua Podcast Network. Dr. Anne Brunette. Dr. Brunette is actually French. Or maybe actually Brunet. B-R-U-N-E-T. Running a Fever, episode 198. Five environmental factors of longevity. It's an irresistibly beautiful day. I'm on the outskirts of Rogers in this park known as Lake Atalanta. And I kind of divided into two areas. One I call Lakeside, which is just a walk around the lake. Nice walkway. Pretty much in full view of the lake, although right now I'm behind some trees, but there are plenty of gaps. It's not a thick wood in between me and the water. The other side I call Woodside, which has no view of the water whatsoever. Except perhaps for a brief walk along a sort of the street which divides the two. Why do I say irresistibly beautiful? Well, it was just impossible for me to resist. It's a Sunday afternoon toward the end of October. It's October 20th. Two o'clock in the afternoon. A lot of times I spend Sundays uh, reading and writing. That's my designated day for reading and writing. And uh, do a little bit of reading every day, but I tried to really do a lot of it on Sunday, and I already have. Uh, since I've got Sunday morning, uh, a lot of times that's when I'll go and take a walk early Sunday morning. Um, but uh, I also like to read early in the morning because my brain is at its best. And usually those hours are devoted to work, my job. And uh, so this morning I was reading a rather a somewhat difficult book called Super Intelligence that I've been reading. I get through a lot of popular fiction uh, and I can read that anytime because it's easy to read. But this afternoon came, I looked out and I said, man, this is just too much to resist. Howdy. Relatively crowded here at uh, Lake Atalanta. Because of that, I'm sure it's just hard for anybody to resist. Coming outside on a day like today, uh, official running a fever temperature, 76 degrees. It's just amazing. Only little clouds in the sky being chased away by the far more powerful sun. And so I'm out here, just a brief medical report. Toe's still bothering me, I'm going to the doctor tomorrow. Uh, right now it doesn't seem that bad. I got going here and I've been barefoot most of the weekend, trying to just keep it away. I can walk barefoot, no problem. Shoes on, gives me a problem. So tomorrow we'll see what Dr. Bychak says about that and hopefully get it fixed and back on our normal just charging ahead schedule of walking, racquetball, weightlifting, walking shorter and longer distances, maybe even doing some other stuff. Five environmental factors of longevity. I noticed this, uh, you know, I found this video a while back on YouTube and it's uh, uh, the Stanford University YouTube channel. And I keep coming back to it, it really intrigued me and got me thinking about some things. The only reason I haven't done an episode on it thus far is that it seems kind of uh, disparate. There's just a few factors. It's like kind of picking out a few longevity factors like, well, you'll see, but <laughs> they don't seem as cohesive as some of the uh, 
you know, typical episode topics I usually like to have. So, the, and I'm operating without my glasses today, so we'll see how we do. Dr. Ann Brunette, a PhD, <clears throat> speaking at a live uh, conference or engagement of some sort. Uh, and this is very much from an academic research point of view. Uh, so not a big picture view of what causes a shorter or longer lifespan. Some of it's actionable, but some is just research. And uh, specifically on model organisms, animals that have a similar aging profile to humans, uh, such as mice and uh, certain types of, types of worms. But it's interesting in terms of uh, some things that could have a big impact on longevity. Jeanne Calment, she mentioned Jeanne Calment, and we, we of course featured an episode on this particular person because she's the longest lived documented human. Uh, and Dr. Brunette is actually French. Maybe actually Brunet, B R U N E T. Dr. Brunet is French, and so Jean Calmont is French as well, or was French. So she certainly brought that out. Uh, genetics are a big factor in aging longevity, but still only 30%. And the older you get, the lower that number gets. The older you get, the more control you have statistically on things that affect your longevity, how long you're going to live. So a lot of this, I think, has to do with the fact that a genetic disease may be more likely to affect you earlier in life, like uh, in childhood. So if you survive childhood, there's less of a chance that this genetic factor is going to come into play. Uh, the rest is environmental, and these are the, this is the subject of this talk. Uh, here are some of the factors that have come out of the research that Dr. Brunet reviewed. Uh, number one is exercise. Should be no surprise to listeners of this show that exercise is a major factor. You know, I think I'm missing a part of this trail that I had been to before. I don't remember. I've got pictures of it. Anyway, I'm just trying to stay aware of that. Really windy right now. And we're passing the spillway of sorts. Keeps the lake at a kind of level. It's a reservoir, so it's controlled. Uh, exercise keeps coming up. You know, Tom Petty said, you never slow down, you'll never get old. And there's something to that. Uh, number two, dietary restriction. Now she mentioned a specific number, 1200 calories caloric restriction and this came out caloric restriction came out in the blue zones um, in the blue zones research there's a correlation there 1200 calories is hard to do that dr. Brunet says so I guess this that's the number that comes out of studies that have been done and we have a whole episode on that so you can she says you can mimic the effect of caloric restriction by intermittent fasting, and that's a much more popular way to do it. Uh, for one thing, if you're calorically restricted, it kind of limits the, uh, not only is it just hard to do diet-wise, but kind of limits your ability to build muscle. So a lot of bodybuilding routines include a, uh, I remember Mark Wahlberg uh, talking, and I once looked at this kind of video, put together a bunch of uh, actors and what they did to prepare for scenes in which they had to be very muscular. Uh, intermittent fasting was one of the things he did. I think he, he only ate between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. or something like that and fasted for 18 hours. So during that time period he had to get all, you know, whatever, 4,000 calories he needed to continue to build muscle with all the working out he was doing so he was able to not restrict his calories in fact increase his calories quite a bit but still do that intermittent fasting 
Although, you know, it's probably more for manipulation of the metabolism in his case as opposed to longevity. Rapamycin is a compound. Uh, she mentioned a couple of different compounds, rapamycin being one of them. Uh, another one is metformin, which comes from French lilac plants. And another one is resveratrol. We've talked about found in the skin of grapes. Resveratrol, which is the red wine compound. Don't wait till I get back to the car to actually finish this episode. That's hard to record in a crowded place. So yeah, resveratrol was the last thing she mentioned. Check this out, I'll have a link at runningfever.com slash 198. Just trying to safely get out of here. It only took me 25 minutes to get here, so 50 minutes round trip, about a 40 minute. Fitness watch says 36 minutes. Check it out. I think you'll benefit from watching it. I did, and that's why I eventually decided to share those concepts with you, but it's only a summary, and I think you'll get more from uh, watching the full video of Dr. Anne Brunet. Thank you for listening to Running a Fever. Remember, if you don't have the fever yet after listening to this whole episode, well, Find a way to catch it and uh, love your life enough to make it last as long as possible. Thank you, and I will talk to you next time on Running Fever.